What is going on guys? Grave here today. I'd like to talk about how Sledgehammer is trying to take full advantage of the PS5 DualSense new features for Call of Duty Vanguard. Now we did see some of these features taken advantage of within Cold War if you actually had a PS5 at that time. But now it seems like more gaming companies are trying to take advantage of these features that new gen consoles offer. Sledgehammer says they want to simulate the trigger weight of a real world weapon uh, in Call of Duty Vanguard for the PS5. They said uh, they kind of are focusing their efforts on using the dual sense adaptive triggers to apply varying degrees of feedback to help create a feeling of weight on the trigger. They kind of gave an example of how it will work with the different weapons. It says if you're using a bolt action rifle, you will feel the tension of that bolt, uh, a much more punch if you're using an LMG or if you get your hands on something like an SMG as well. They said even uh, the dual sense will even work with scopes, meaning that downside speed and the L2 uh, trigger weight changed based on what weapon you're wielding and what attachments you have on and how it will feel when you ADS. It says haptic feedback will pay, uh, play a big part too. Uh, it says whenever the enemy is firing back uh, down on you or on cover, you'll feel the impact of the debris flying around you. Uh, while, you know, like a bombing raid, you'll feel the thud of heavy explosions. And of course, they went on to say, you know, this is the first time they've taken advantage of it. They did do some things in Cold War, but they're looking to get kind of a, uh, I guess, building blocks on that system they used last year and make it even more of an advanced system with this year's Call of Duty. Now, personally for me, I don't use the L1 or the L2, excuse me, R2 triggers. I use L1, R1. I use the top bumper, bumpers when I shoot. Uh, that's how I've always been in FPS games, as long as we have been allowed to swap them. As soon as, soon as we can swap those to L1R1, I have done it. Uh, now, of course, when I used to play on Xbox uh, for years, you know, to begin with the fir very first Xbox that ever came out, I started playing Halo, I, you know, I used L2R2. But over the years, I have adapted to using that L1R1. I personally like it better. I'm not a fan of any, uh, you know, even shaking with the controller. You know, I, I turn off everything. Um, even when I had a scuff controller, uh, of course, you could get those triggers on the back that would actually allow you to tighten them or tense them up. I still use L1R1. I just prefer it personally better for me. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that might want to take advantage of this to make them feel a little bit more immersed in the game. Personally, I will definitely use it in the single player story. I've only had my PS5 for about three months now, and I have used the adaptive triggers in some single player game story games. And I think it is an absolute phenomenal experience to use it. It just kind of engrosses you in the game even more. Uh, you, it makes you feel like you're even more part of it, I guess. And I think it's a great feature. Like I said, some people may really enjoy it playing a first person shooter. Personally for me, like I said, I won't use it in multiplayer. I will definitely try it out in the campaign. And if you have not tried out the adaptive triggers or anything yet, I would highly recommend it just to kind of get that to see what it feels like. Like I said, the way it immerses you in the game even more besides what you're seeing uh, visually and of course you're getting the feeling of some different things as well with your hands on the controller. It is a very neat feature. Anyway guys, leave me a comment with your thoughts. Would you uh, be using this in a first person game like Call of Duty or some other you know FPS games out there? These companies are going to start taking advantage of you know this new gen tech more and more I think over the years. I think we'll start seeing more and more games being made for new gen. I think that process is probably going to slow down a bit considering it's hard for everyone out there still to get a new gen console if they want one. I think if they would have been in good supply, we probably would have seen uh, you know more games being made for new gen a lot sooner than we will. I feel I still think that some games are still going to be made for old, old gen a little bit longer than we expected, just because of like the supply issues. But overall, I think the triggers are a very cool idea, and some people out there may really like them in Call of Duty Vanguard's multiplayer. Like I said, I'll be using them in single player. Not a big fan of it in multiplayer personally, but leave me a comment with your thoughts. And of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. Be sure to check out everything down in the description, the community discord, my Twitter, and of course the affiliates here on the channel, Empire Jerky and Amazon Associates. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.